<laughs> um, so I'm going to talk about Sinatra. Let's see if I can remember how to get out of Keynote. All right, there we go. No, I'm ashamed. I'm actually using PowerPoint. Oh, oh, God. Uh, oh it's, it's a little sad. <laughs> I know. It'll be all right. <laughs> um, Sinatra, in essence, is a uh, a what they call a micro framework. It's uh, I like to think of it as Rails without all the overhead, and that's both server overhead and kind of mental overhead. Um, the routing, especially, is a lot easier to sort of get your head wrapped around, and it really suits itself well for a lot of different applications, some of which I'm going to blow through real quick. A lot of these are things I've actually used it for. Um, yeah, you have to drag the window over there. Yeah, let me get this open first. Um, it's been around since for at least two years now, I think, and as he mentioned, it just went to 1.1. And one of the nice little additions to 1.1 is it is essentially drop-in to be mounted inside of a Rails 3 application. And I'll show you one specific use case for that here in a minute, because I'm actually using it to do that. Cool. Anyone else played around with Rails 3 yet? Like a lot? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Uh, I can't tell if that's a really it is fun or a sarcastic. No, 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 it is fun. <laughs> um, especially the mounting thing once I figured everything out. Um, made it really easy to split like non-core parts of the application off into certain little subsets, um, which worked out really well. That's the one I want. <laughs> and I had a different bad Sinatra pun here to begin with, so forgive me. Um, <laughs> so again, I'm going to talk about use cases first. These are the four primary ones that I've used it or seen it used for. Um, one is sort of like a utility infielder. Um, which is just for those small little things that aren't core to your app that you don't really want to clutter up your app with, launch a Sinatra application that does all that sort of stuff. Um, another one is sort of a, uh, a dashboard for services. Two examples I'll get into later are pretty popular. Uh, the third one's small little apps, uh, Twitter bots, blog engines, that sort of thing. There's an absolute metric ton of blog engines written in Sinatra. And the last one is what I was referring to earlier, is a mountable component inside of a Rails 3 application. All right, so some of the ways, and these are ways that we tended to use it um, when I worked at the Star. Um, feed fetching especially, we had a lot of cases where we had uh, some other systems we had to pull content in from and sort of munge the data and spit it back out in a partial that we could pull into something else. And we didn't really want to clutter up the main application with that stuff. So we had a, a small uh, Sinatra app that we just called Glue um, that would essentially hit all these things for like school closings um, off of the WIBC website because and we let them know ahead of time we were doing that um, <laughs> um, or uh, scraping headlines off of Metromix um, and getting them all set up so we could dump them on IndieStar.com. Um, Another thing we used it for a lot was uh, essentially APIs um, that are sort of specialized. We had an app that did uh, nothing but generate the API for our iPhone application, for instance. Um, so it connected to the same database as the main application, but all it was there to do was to feed the iPhone app. Um, put everything in the binary plist, and whenever the iPhone called it, it'd send it back down. Um, and there's a lot of other sort of little one-off sort of things. We needed a feed for our Obed app that was written in PHP like 10 years ago um, that I didn't want to touch with a 10-foot pole. So just fire up a small little Sinatra app, um, connect to the same database, and spit back out the feed. Um, it works really well for that stuff, and if I had my laptop, I've had examples of it, but I'll show you a couple here in a little bit. Um, the second one's uh, sort of quickie dashboards. These are two one really popular and one slightly less popular sort of uh, monitoring things. Uh, Rescue is a, uh, a successor of sorts to delayed job. It's a way to do uh, 
background processes uh, in Ruby. Um, Rescue uses Redis as the back end and it's done by the GitHub guys and it's really intended for uh, really heavy use of background sort of jobs where you take it out of the request cycle of the web. Um, and they have a monitoring system that's built with Sinatra that lets you see how many workers are running, what they're churning on, how much is still sitting in there. Uh, the other one, Amnesia, is a uh, memcached monitoring um, sort of dashboard that shows you how many cache hits and misses you have, how full you are, all that sort of stuff. Um, that, work, that is particularly handy because memcached is sort of a black box. You just throw stuff into it and don't always think about, well, how well are we doing things. Um, and theirs also is completely Sinatra based. Um, quickie app examples, um, Twitter bots, Facebook apps, and like I said, an absolute metric ton of blogging engines. Um, and then again, I'm going to backloading this with code so that I can get out of this thing. Um, the last one is, like I mentioned earlier, mounting it into a Rails 3 app. Um, in my case, it's running the uh, blog for uh, a side project I'm working on. Because um, I didn't really want to build a blog directly into the application. It's kind of its own self-contained little component, and I can reuse it in other places. Um, and you just do that second line there in your routes, mount twig is the name of the application, or the class, I should say, um, to slash blog. And thanks to Sinatra 1.1, that actually works. Um, before that, it would leave a uh, trailing slash on some stuff, and it would just fall down horribly unless you hacked away at it. Um, so that is one of the very nice things about that. And let me show you an example of what that actually looks like, that twig. Um, and I just finished this up today, so... And I did it in a hurry, so it's probably a little fugly, and I apologize for that. Come on. <laughs> SSL connection setup calls. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Damn you, fire sheet. Um, <laughs> um, again, it, using it for this particular purpose that Rails 3 sort of lets you do, and it doesn't have to be Sinatra, it can be any sort of rackable app, and that's the important thing about Sinatra, it's built on top of rack essentially, so any way you launch any other rack application, which would include Rails, um, it's essentially the exact same way. It's just, you know, uh, for instance, you can rack up config.ru if you have that in there. Um, when you throw it in a Rails app, you don't even have to do that, it's just part of the application. So when you, yeah, because yeah, I'm messed with that monitoring stuff yet, but yeah. essentially you monitor it in there and then everything is just namespace within that, that mm -hmm. blog and it, it runs yeah. after the same way, just yeah. adds the... Yeah, it just skips things. Rails completely, it just says, okay, just go here instead. Um, while well, we wait for that, I'm going to see if I can actually throw up the example. Uh, let's see if that's also slow. Wireless hotspot. Oh, I'm not. It's actually, it's actually using my phone. Matt Gordon's phone. <laughs> 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 You know, it was working until somebody broke it. <laughs> mm. Oh, shit, yeah. Here, hold on a second. <laughs> so, I used to keep all my source code in Dropbox. Okay. And that's a really bad, I, that's a really bad plan, by the way. And so, uh, <laughs> when, uh, basically got to the point where I couldn't run Dropbox at all, because it just eat all the memory and constantly run the hard drive, checking all the files. So I deleted them all, like a month ago. And it's still rectifying. Hmm. I only have like a half a million files to go now. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of bad. Let's look at that. that. <laughs> I connected to the Wi-Fi. Like um, <laughs> yeah. Seriously. All right, so let's look at the code first. This is what it ends up being. It's just a very simple little blog engine. The nice thing about this one is that there are so many sort of static blog engines out there. Um, that you edit text files and send everything up. Um, I don't, you know, I, I write in a text editor all day anyway. Occasionally when I'm writing a blog, I like to use something like Mars Edit or some desktop software to actually update it. And once you get into that, your choices are WordPress or Typo or something ungodly, unwieldy. Um, 
So I hacked together something a lot smaller that I could mount into the main app that this is part of, um, which it is still getting hacked together. So it's called Twig because it's based off a earlier experimental one that was called Sin. And being a old Nine Inch Nails fan, the song that comes after Sin is That's What I Get, Twig. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it's powered it's Sinatra and Mongo. Um, so if we open up twig.rb, the, the other nice thing about Sinatra is you can literally put an entire application in one file. Uh, views, routes, models, everything, one file, that's it, you're done. Um, I didn't go quite that far into this one. Um, in this case we have our class post. Can you zoom? Sure. Um, all right. So we have requires up here. Uh, I'm using Mongo, so Mongoid and Mongoid Slug, which just does slugging. And then our discount, which does uh, markdown, textile, all that good stuff. Um, so we have our post class, which is what actually is the one database-based class in this thing. Um, just title, author, description, and the slug is the title. Um, and then it has a two meta web logs so that it can actually communicate with things like Mars Edit. Um, and then now we get on a Sinatra thing. Now this, you don't always have to do. Um, when you're mounting something, you have to give it a class though so you can tell Rails no, mount the class. You can actually do a full Sinatra app. Let's see if I can just open up text editor here. Yeah, I, I, I use Emacs. <laughs> That's all right. Didn't expect that to. Hope you don't mind. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> um, so, I'm sure Vim, I'm sure Vim's on there. Yeah, I'm not real good at that either. Meta X. Yeah, who cares? I'm not actually going to save it. All right. So you could actually just do require Sinatra, and then you use the HTML verb. So in this case, it'd be get hello do, and again, I'm doing this off on the top of my head, so this may or may not actually work. Um, <coughs> That's all you would need to do. That's a completely valid Sinatra application. It's just get hello, and all it's going to do is return hello. Um, you could do post, post slash swap. Um, something else in the end. Um, and so this would essentially just do a post to that and then give splat. You can also do named ones. So get and then you have param slug. Um, essentially the same sort of thing. Um, so that again is a perfectly valid way to do Sinatra but you get to anything slightly big, it starts to become a problem in a hurry. Um, so, we go back to this. Um, I have a views folder, um, and you tell it where to find that. In this case, it's in the same directory as Twig. So, views, and then there's a public folder that just has CSS and uh, one image. Um, so, we have get slash front page, get post slash ID, that's a single post, and then everything else is meta weblog API. Um, so, really basic user authentication. Um, that's just going to return, that's going to say, okay, what did you actually call here? Because MetaWebLog does MetaWebLog dot whatever, dot get post, for instance, we'll find the post and return it, and get recent post, new post, edit post, get categories, all that good stuff. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and again, this is, uh, the, the, only the only trick to mounting it really 
um, is you need to require it somewhere so that Rails knows it. If you're in, if you're using Ruby 1.8.6, you can just slap this in lib and do require twig and everything will be hunky dory. If you're using 1.9 or higher, they change the way require works due to security of all things. Um, so, yeah, so you have to do this rigmarole, require, file, expand, path, lib, lib, twig, file. Um, that took me a whole afternoon to figure out why the hell that was happening. Um, <laughs> um, and again, this is way more complicated than you should have to do to use this. At some point, it'll be a gem that has a nice little generator that'll essentially set all this stuff up. Um, and there's obviously stuff I'd like to add, so if anybody feels like chipping in, feel free. Um, but this is the sort of thing that Sinatra works really well for, are sort of isolated components or little things you need to do that don't really fit in the scope of your overall Rails application. Um, and I'm trying to. Now, when it comes to testing time, uh, test unit works perfectly fine. There's also a rack test. Let's see if I remember that right. Nope. <laughs> yeah, and these. And their documentation is also extremely well done. Again, this, this is essentially all the right you have. Get, post, put, delete. Um, you can do name params. You can just do splat. Um, yeah, you know, I should do slash, splat, 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 if you want, but really want. Um, you can do conditions on these routes, like a particular uh, user agent, particular host name, uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, um, another nice thing that came in Sinatra 1.1 was the ability to render just about every sort of a templating language you can think of. Hamel, ERB, Arubis, Builder, Nokogiri templates, which I've never actually heard of before. That's fun. Uh, SAS, SCSS, Less, Liquid, Markdown, Textile, RDoc, <laughs> Radius, wait, wait, there's more, Markaby, <laughs> CoffeeScript, which is kind of interesting to do. And then again, you can just do inline, just like I did before with the ERB, just Hamel, div, title, hello world, and you just stick your views directly into the application itself. Um, variables work kind of like how you'd expect. You set instance variables and uh, all that good stuff. Uh, name templates, just testing stuff. You get all the request object stuff, and it's it's kind of a thin layer on top of Rack that it uh there's a lot of stuff in Rails you're going to be missing if you're using Sinatra. You're not going to have a link to. You're not going to have any of the JavaScript helpers. Not going to have any of that sort of stuff that helps you along. But for projects where you don't really need that, where it's small enough that you're not going to run into, why do I have to keep writing a h r e f equals post permalink? you know, all that stuff over and over and over again. Um, maybe you don't need it. Um, and stuff that you do need, there are things out there that will sort of build on top of even Sinatra. There's another one called a Padrino um, that adds a lot of those sort of helpers back on top of this. Um, and actually it does some nice things with sort of mountable applications as well. Um, do we use Padrino? Padrino? Yeah, I, I have, I've played around with it a little bit. Um, I ran into a problem where uh, sessions weren't moving real well between mounted applications. I don't know if that's been fixed yet, but that was sort of when I stopped, was I was like, uh... Because <laughs> there, there are some certain times where I sit there and I go, do I really want to bring out the Rails hammer to do this? It's like I just need something smaller. And right now there's the two extremes. You have Rails and then you have Sinatra. Um, and then Padrino's supposed to be like that nice gooey center in between those. Um, and it's it's interesting. It's just not quite there yet. And when all supposed the... to be able to, I mean, 
share session stuff between, say, a Rails app and a mounted Sonata app as well? Or? I haven't played around with that, but it, I think it would be possible. But I don't know that offhand. I haven't had to do that because in the case of the blog here, I don't even have a session. There's no UI. There's nothing to log into. It's all done uh, via API, which works out kind of well. Um, there it is. <laughs> so again, rack test, um, which is sort of just integration sort of testing stuff. Tell it what the application is and then get that. Cert, the response is OK. Cert, the body's that. All that sort of stuff. Um, Again, there, the documentation for this is really, I suspect it's more lines than the actual code. Um, I haven't actually checked that, um, but I'm willing to bet it is. Uh, again, this is just a really quick sort of fly through overview of this. Um, there really is a lot of stuff you can do. People have built entire applications off of this, which is a little astonishing to me. Um, Documentation should be in the wild. Yeah. So, there are all these applications, and you'll notice if you actually look at this page, how many of them have the word blog somewhere in them. This is like the ideal sort of blog interface, especially for uh, little tiny stuff that you don't quite want to be uh, static, but pretty close. Um, and then full websites, um, paste services, uh, follow cost, um, Sinatra based. GitHub uses Sinatra in a lot of different places. Um, and again, it, that's that's sort of the, the other main use case. Rather than whole applications, it's nice occasionally to think of Sinatra as sort of a component of a larger system. Um, that's it, the only way we used it at the star actually was little little things that we didn't want in the main application that we needed to have, but we kind of wanted to be off in their own little corner of things so we didn't have to worry about it so much. Um, so like I said, a lot of feed fetching, like a lot. Um, and we've got all these companies using it, which obviously isn't everybody. Um, so any questions or anything you want me to go into in a little bit more detail? I, I have a little less code to show than I planned to, but. Nothing? Does Sinatra does it use the same review process like you mount it into a Rails application? Yeah, yeah, if you mount it in, it's using the same so process. Like on, it any no, no. It uses the exact same process. Or else I'd be out of memory on low node probably. Um, <laughs> I guess uh yeah. Yeah. I'm curious if you have you know if you have any rules of thumb for like when you would when you would choose to use Sinatra. Like in the cases where I've used it, it's like it's like dumb. Like I'm literally yeah. writing like like ten lines. So there, yeah. I'm sure it's not yeah. the best choice. <laughs> but like something like this, like a blog, where you're like, oh well, you know, I'm not writing no code here. Yeah. How do you decide to use Sinatra instead of instead of Rails? Um, it comes down to, for me at least, I, I tend to think of what's the smallest possible thing I can use to get this done. And at the point where thinking about it starts to become painful, <laughs> that I go up a level. In, in the case of the blog engine, there was existing, there was an existing little piece of code that a lot of that stuff came out of that was like three years old. Um, so somebody already did a lot of the work for me. Okay. Um, and if you look at his, the templates are actually, and this is a little old, so some of this stuff has settled. <laughs> um, in his case, he's got layout directly in there and is actually doing the templates directly in um, and just spitting out HTML and saying stick that in. <coughs> um, so that's a good example of that. Um, this is specifically the part that's subtle. He was actually doing uh, some fun stuff there that uh, you can't do anymore. <laughs> um, but all this meta web blog stuff, it's already there. And it's still, you know, this whole thing's 184 lines of code. I mean, it's not much. Um, and if you do it in Rails, it's still not. It's still a fairly small app, but you have all that Rails overhead of stuff that you may or may not actually need. Rails three makes that a little easier because you can just say, well, don't include like Active Record or Active Support or whatever else you don't need. Um, but especially before, where you were pretty much pulling in the whole damn thing, 
that's a lot of overhead that you may or may not actually need. So at, at least that's the way I tend to think of applications is what's, what's the smallest possible thing I can build this in? And then as I start thinking about it, I'm thinking, well, I'm going to need four, like five, six models or something like that. That's when it starts to be like, I'm not sticking that all in one file. And if i got to create a model directory, I'm better off just using my own. Okay. That's the general way I look at it anyway. That makes sense. Yeah. Stack is also really great for making joke websites that's in yeah. Google really fast because you need a record file and a Ruby file. <laughs> and you can play on the free. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, let me. Also, I think a lot of people like the routing yeah. type because if you tell somebody, hey, this route file maps from your action to your thing, some people may get fuzzy on that. Yeah. But you show them this and it's like, oh, okay first one matches do that it's far less magic yeah yeah well and it, that that's the other part of the overhead that you get with rails is sort of the routing and having to think through all that sort of stuff the nice thing about sinatra you don't have that overhead at all it's just get whatever the hell you want it to be and you don't have to think about anything really <laughs> um, so you lose a lot of that sort of mental overhead that comes with using rails sometimes so and this is a really quick example of a rack up file if you haven't seen one before. So, um, like I said, really easy. <laughs> right. Sinatra has also been like ported to every language oh, platform yeah. ever. There, there's ones in Node, Python, God, you name it. Yeah, Somebody's done something. JavaScript, with Python, for a yeah. while. And, and I think a, I think a lot of that has to do with the, the routing bit specifically. And there are actually some Rails plugins that sort of hack into it and pretend like you can actually do the routing that way in your controllers. Um, but I don't know that I'd recommend them. I'm not 100% sure how well they work. <laughs> well, the routing is at least a little more sane at this point. And in Rails yeah. 3, I, yeah. I think it's a little more straightforward at least. Yeah, yeah. A good bit. Well, it's simple too. I think I don't know yeah. what it is now, but when they when I first started hearing about Sinatra, they were like, "Oh, it's a uh, 140 lines or something." Yeah, I think it's a little bigger than that now, but <laughs> not a lot. Maybe if you don't count the template stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the almost all those uh, templating languages I mentioned are 1.1 1 .1 sort of stuff. They've added a crap ton of that stuff um, in this version. So. Yeah, and localization and else. So it seemed like for a point release, it had kind of a lot. Yeah. In it. Yeah, and the the one big thing is being able to make it um, mountable in a Rails three app without having to fiddle around with it. But yeah, but you're still looking at you know two files, three counting exceptions. I mean, it's not it's not big. <laughs> yeah, the mounting thing is. That's probably what's most interesting to me because I, yeah. and I always will probably make a Rails app for the most part, but I'm yeah. always struggling with you know how I get other applications interacting with it and stuff yeah. like that. And so it's you know in some cases I wonder if Sinatra is a better fit than trying to work an engine or something yeah. into the. Uh, Especially if it's something that you think you're probably going to need in another application, mm -hmm. like specifically that little tiny blog engine. It's like if I build another one, I need to add a blog. It's just dump that in there yeah. and done. Um, and there's, there's actually a lot of sort of things that are moving toward that mountable thing. I think Spree, when I, when I talk to those guys, Spree is a, uh, an e-commerce platform uh, for Ruby on Rails. Uh, when I talked to those guys at RailsConf, they were thinking about doing theirs as mountable, uh, where you just mount it into some other application. Um, I don't know if they've actually done that. Yeah, I think they have. <laughs> have they? Yeah. I know, I know they did a release recently that was Rails 3 compatible, but I don't know if they did that or not. Um, but the nice thing with that Rails 3 mounting is anything that's a rack app, as long as you can say mount and whatever the class name is at the start of it, um, it will should work, um, which is really handy. So, okay. Anything else? Cool. Thank you.